Good morning and welcome to Woodlawn Without Walls Worship. I'm Pastor Lori and I'm delighted to be worshiping with you at whatever time you're watching on whatever device you're joining in. Here at Woodlawn, we're committed to maintaining our online service for two important reasons. First, for our church members who are unable to attend in person, it's important to us that we maintain a way to stay connected through online worship. And second, for anybody who's interested in finding out a little bit more about who we are here at Woodlawn as a community of faith and grace, may this worship service serve as a invitation to you. If you fit that last category and you'd like to find out more about who we are here at Woodlawn, you can find that information on our website, woodlawnumc.net. Here at Woodlawn, we focus on a specific mission each Sunday in worship and target our giving towards that mission. If you're interested in finding out more information about what our mission is for today, that is also on our website. This morning, Caitlin Ott, our children's director, is going to be leading us in our Advent wreath lighting. Here a reading of select verses from Luke 1. God sent the angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words, but the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor, favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. How will this be, Mary asked, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Today we light the candle of hope and the candle of peace. We long for the peace that Mary felt as she was comforted by the angel's words. We are reminded how your peace reaches us through others. We find peace when we share life together. Let us pray. Holy God, in our times of confusion, doubt, fear, or loneliness, help us seek you. Remind us the richness that awaits as we seek you together in study of your word or in unifying prayer. Awaken each of us to your peaceful presence that is always with us, to the ways you bring peace through our relationships. Prepare us to be transformed and to be agents of your peace in the world. Help us find peace as we share life together. Amen.
It's the time in our service where we come together as a community of faith, as persons of faith, lifting our prayers together. If you have a joy or a concern or a person who you would like to lift up in prayer today, please list that in the comments if you're watching here on Facebook. You can also call the church office anytime during office hours or even call and leave a message if you have a prayer request you would like added to our prayer email that goes out each day. And if you would like to see receive that prayer email so you can be in touch and praying for the Woodlawn community, call the church office and we can get you added to the email list. Let's go to God together now in prayer. Holy God, God of peace, God of assurance, God of love, God who is deeply present with us. We come to you today with open hearts, seeking you, seeking your presence for the joys that we hold. God, we give you thanks, knowing you celebrate with us for the grief that we carry. God, we know you join us there too. We lift up the names of people and situations that lay heavy on our hearts today. Those who need your healing touch. Those who are seeking you. Those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. God, help us to remember we all stand continually in need of you. In need of your grace, in need of your healing mercy. Bring each of us to you with open, repentant hearts, seeking your loving care. And God, as we prepare to hear the words of the sermon today, prepare to hear your words of scripture, we ask that you transform us, that we might be, become more and more like you. Speak to us today. Help us to be aware of your presence every day. We ask this as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Welcome to the second Sunday of Advent. We return to our sermon series, Share Life. In this series, we are looking at how our life as connected Christians, our life as the body of Christ, is enriched by being together. Throughout Advent, we will seek hope, peace, love, and joy together. Last week, you'll remember we talked about finding hope together. That's the first candle that Caitlin lit for us today. We talked about how we can find hope together through grief groups, through support groups, through Sunday school classes that do life together. We talked about how we can find hope through the assurance of God's promises. And because of that hope, we find hope together in Advent. The hope of Advent is what comes to us as we anticipate and remember Christ breaking into the world to live among us. This week, though, we are focusing on peace, finding peace together. What does that look like, you might wonder? And what does that even mean? Peace has so many different meanings and understandings. There's peace like a lack of war, Peace, like a peaceful feeling, being relaxed. Peace, like a piece of pie. 
What kind of peace are we talking about here? Let's look into the scripture to help us out with that. Our scripture reading today is short and sweet. It's from the gospel according to John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. The peace of God is where our scripture takes us. And with this verse, we're reminded of the peace of the presence of Christ. You might recognize this verse as part of what's referred to as Jesus's farewell discourse. He's preparing the disciples to be without him. This is part of his last declarations to his disciples before the events of Holy Week and Easter begin to take place. Jesus is speaking on three main points in this section. He is telling them that he's leaving, telling his disciples and followers he's leaving. He's telling them that they cannot come with him, that they are staying. But he's saying the Holy Spirit will be with them so that they may continue his work. The disciples really can't get past that first bullet point, though. They get stuck again and again on that first point, Jesus is leaving. In various ways, they continue asking, um, could we go back to that first thing that you said? I'm sorry, you're going somewhere? And what, we can't follow you now? That's what we've been doing all these years? And then we get to Thomas who says, well, Lord, we don't even know where you're going. How are we supposed to follow you? That's what we talked about last week, the disciple Thomas, and how Jesus answered both of those questions, all of those questions by saying, you know where I'm going. Follow me. I am the way. You know the way because I am the way. And the destination is communion with me and my father. And then Jesus references the coming of another advocate, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will be with them. The peace of Christ will be with them. That is Jesus's promise to the disciples. My peace I leave you. I do not give as the world gives. And you know, this peace that Jesus is speaking of is probably a direct criticism or direct contrast to the Pax Romana. Pax Romana in Latin means Roman peace, and it signifies the peace that existed between the nationalities within the Roman Empire during that time frame. That was what was going on right then for Jesus and the disciples. But what Jesus says is, I want to be clear, my peace is not that. I do not give peace as the world gives. My peace is different. Jesus is trying to point to his disciples, point out to them about the Holy Spirit's work within and around them. That peace of the Holy Spirit is a spiritual peace, a peace that looks and feels different than what they're used to. That the peaceful experience of the world is not like the peace that Jesus leaves with them. My peace I leave with you, Jesus says. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. That is a phrase seen throughout scripture. The simple phrase, do not be afraid, offers words of assurance to deliver comfort and hope to those without hope, as in the case with Zechariah and Elizabeth from Luke chapter 1, 7 and 24 through 25. Words of assurance to deliver news of miracles to those not necessarily looking for miracles, as in the case with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Words of assurance as a disruption to those going about their daily routines 
offering words of assurance and peace to that disruption they're causing, like the visit of the angel to the shepherds. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. The holy messenger visiting Mary is offering words of assurance. Do not be afraid, Mary. Words of assurance, just like the words Jesus left with his disciples, promising of his peace to be with them. Do not be afraid, Mary. You are favored. God is with you. Words of assurance spoken to Mary. But Mary is still perplexed, troubled. What kind of greeting can this be? Do not be afraid, the angel says and shares the message from God that Mary is to have a son and she will call him Jesus. Mary asks a few more questions and we slowly see her move from perplexed to peace. These holy words of assurance from God's sacred messenger who brought great news were the cause frightening news, but ultimately the words brought peace as Mary responds, let it be with me according to your word. Mary moves from denial to disciple in just a few short verses. She finds peace from the words of God. We see the progression move from doubt and searching, searching for God. How can this be? How can what you say happen or be true? To affirming the presence of God when the angel tells her the Holy Spirit will come. And then to hearing the fulfillment of God's promises when she hears that her cousin Elizabeth, who had not been able to bear children, is indeed with child. God is with Mary as we hear from the angel, and God is with us. As we're finding peace together this Sunday, the question arises, how do we do that? We hear in scripture that Jesus is with us. Jesus leaves his peace with us. We hear those words of assurance. There is peace to be found, modeled for us in the Annunciation to Mary. But Mary is the mother of God, special. Can that same peace that she is finding in the Annunciation be available to us? And the answer is emphatically yes. When Mary goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth, Elizabeth says, blessed is she who believed that there could be a fulfillment of what the Lord had spoken. Notice she is blessed. Mary is blessed. Not because she is carrying the son of God, but here Elizabeth is saying she is blessed because she believed. She believed in what the Lord had shared with her. She believed that scripture would be fulfilled. She believed God's word. So whatever blessing Mary is is receiving here is one that we are all able to share through our belief. Through our belief. While we cannot obviously be the physical parents of Jesus, we can believe God's word will be fulfilled. In Luke 8, 21, Jesus tells a crowd of people, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. Peace is to be found in many places. Peace through the words of assurance found saturated in scripture. And what a gift to study scripture together, to hear how the words speak to each one of us, to learn together, to question and seek peace together, to speak words of peace, words of scripture to someone in need who might need to hear those words of assurance. 
We are assured of God with Mary and God with us this Advent season. May we sit with the assurance that God is with us. And may we receive those assuring words of Gabriel that Gabriel gave to Mary. Do not be afraid. God is with us. God is with us. The peace of Christ in us, at work through us, assures us that God is with us. In the New Testament, words of assurance have purpose. As we see in these two stories here, they offer comfort. When the status quo is about to be altered, when things are going to be turned upside down, the rhythm of every day is about to be disrupted. They remind us these words of assurance that God is with us. These are words of peace coming in a time of anxiety, fear, fear of the unknown, confusion. Imagine for a moment, <clears throat> close your eyes if you wish, and imagine the words of the angel Gabriel being spoken to you. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid. Imagine the words of Christ that were spoken to the disciples being spoken to you. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I am with you always. Do not be afraid. Both statements remind us of God's presence with us. The presence of God's peace within us and around us. This Advent, we find peace together by being reminded that the Holy Spirit is a never-ending source of peace for us, always available to us. We can seek peace together by studying scripture, joining in prayer, sharing scripture and encouraging words of assurance that bring about peace around us. Reminding ourselves through God's word of that promise, God is with us. Isn't that what the Christmas and Advent season is all about? Emmanuel, God is with us. Receive this blessing. The peace and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Go in peace. Amen. One note, today is Communion Sunday. And if you are a person who is unable to come to church in person and would like to receive a visit from a pastor and receive communion, call the church office and let us know. We would gladly do that for you. Have a wonderful day. Amen.